Uh, sweet. Wait a minute. This should have a short circuit protection as well. So when we short this out, we're supposed to trigger the low error. Why didn't we? Let's find out. We have one volt across this one meg resistor. It's about one microamp, so that makes sense. Short it out, zero volts. That <laughs> makes sense. So now let's take a look at what's happening on the output of this op amp. Now we got 2.1 volts on the output. What do we have on the input? One volt. Now I got, whoa, that minimum output voltage is pretty high. And then what's our threshold? Oh, we barely missed 1.11 volts. We are looking for something slightly larger than a 10K resistor. Thankfully, we've got our E96 decade of resistors in the 10K decade. So let's take a look. We got a 154. Let's start there. I think 154 will be just enough to get us over the edge. So for those not familiar with the E96 series of resistors, so basically what you do is you take this three digit code and you multiply it by the decade. In this case, the decade is 10,000 ohms. So this is the first two decimal places and then the third. So this is 15.4 kilo ohms. If this was one K would be 1.54 kilo ohms. Let's just verify a couple of these resistors. Uh, yeah, looks good. 15.4 kilo ohms. Mm-hmm. Two more to check. Yep. And that's gonna be a yup. All right, so we got four 15.4K resistors. And I'm gonna try to do this under the microscope for you. Slide the resistor into place. Kind of working over it. Yeah, I think that worked out all right. Grab our second resistor. Bump you down to R109. Slide it into place. Okay, so now R109 has way too much solder and R107 has way too much solder, so we'll call that one a success. Uh, let's do a quick verification that our fix worked. Nothing too crazy here. We're just gonna plug it in. So we had a little beep on startup. That's good, it's supposed to do that. And now if we switch back to current mode and we short this out, Look at that, we're getting a beep. I do not like the weird detuning that's happening. And if I were to plug in our monitor, why, literally what, what is happening? Do you guys hear that demonic noise? Guess when I hold it, totally fine. Short it out. Trigger low. It's trigger low. Trigger high. Wait, yeah, low, high, low, high. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, now let's make that stop. Our ESD monitor is working as expected. I was scared there for a moment that I'd flipped like the positive and negative, but thankfully it looks like that's not the case. It looks like we have an ESD mount monitor that should function as expected. So yeah, we just set that lower threshold a little bit too low. I forget, I think it was at the half a meg. 
half a mega ohm was just a little bit too small, so we bumped it up. Should be just under a meg, because um, one mega ohm is obviously not tripping the alarm, which should be just perfect because wrist straps, etc., all have a one mega ohm built-in impedance. So, well, at least everyone I've found. All right. Sorry, excuse me. This must be the buzzer that we tried to remove and put back on. Looks like we managed to break it in that process. Well, that's unfortunate. The LED indicator still works, but the buzzer doesn't. So I guess we'll just go ahead and remove that. Unfortunate. That's all right. We can still test this. I cannot believe I just forgot to unplug that. Did I just blow this power brick? Oh, I blew the fuse. Of course. Okay. Well, I suppose this is why we have fuses, right? Because every once in a while, you go ahead and do something stupid. Cool. All right, so it looks like we're getting a mat high error. Let's screw this in. Looks good. Now let's short it out. Let's see if we get a mat low error. That is correct. And let's find the audio cable. And we're gonna see a mat, or sorry, an operator high. Hold it, no error. Let's short it out, see if we see an operator low. Yep, looks good. So this one works, but needs a new buzzer. This one totally works. And let's take a look at the previously broken serial number one. So you can see that the mat has a mat high error. Let's just prod around Oh wait, that's not an error right now. That's how it should be. Let's add a little impedance. Yeah, so we added our resistor and the mat high error persists. Let's go ahead and measure the voltage on this side. The FET, we're getting right around one volt. Let's measure the voltage on the output. We are getting, we are getting 11 volts. Okay, did R? 204 fail as a short circuit? No, it measures 10K. R205? Maybe there is a cold solder joint? It seems to be an open, open circuit. Oh, you know what? Yeah, it kind of looks like that resistor cracked. Like the, uh, the terminal came off. Yeah, it looked like it was physically damaged which makes a lot of sense because I'll admit I was wrestling with the enclosure a little bit more than I typically would. This thing wasn't fitting very well and in fact I got it stuck so I had to cut this thing out of a 3D printed enclosure twice. <laughs> so the R205 replaced, hopefully the mat monitor works correctly. Look at that, no error on the mat. If I take this out, we get a mat high error. If I sh short it with our tweezers, we should get a low error. Perfect. 
If I plug in our operator, we got an operator high error. If I short it, we should get the low error. If I hold it, we should get no error. Perfect. So it looks like we now have three fully functional ESD monitors, which means there's nothing left to do in this video. Uh, I just want to walk through the assembly and installation of one of these. And we're going to use the one that is obviously fully functional. I think we need to leave that cover on for now. I'm going to flip the sticker around so I can remove it from the back if I want to. But that thing is just super annoying. Like I just, I just can't, I'm sorry. Okay, so we've got two ground terminals. Two ground terminals on the back. Ground, ground sense. Here's what I'm gonna do with those. We're gonna tie the main ground to earth. We're gonna tie our mat to a different earth on the other side. We're gonna tie our mat to obviously this corner of the mat, which will allow it to be monitored correctly. And the second ground we'll use as an auxiliary barrel jack, because we've got that like metal uh, soldering stand thing that we use when we're doing a whole bunch of hot air soldering. And I want to be able to tie that into this network. So I'm just going to go ahead and tie it onto that second ground with a separate one meg resistor to that board. Maybe a separate little ESD mat on there. I don't, I don't know. We'll figure that out. But that's where we're going to start. Uh, so basically, one earth coming in, second earth coming out, mat coming in. Then the operator is both earthed and monitored through this mono plug. Then all we need to do is take our 3D printed enclosure. Uh, let's see if I can get this aligned so you can read it. So it's got operator, mat, then high, low, high, low, and a power indicator. And then what one would do if they were looking to install this, and I don't know if this enclosure... Yeah, it's a little bit tight the first time. You put the board in. The reason why is because of some of the imperfections in the printing process. Uh, but there we go. So now you can see that from the back, one can access the power plug. And then an M3 screw. It appears that I'm through the PCB. I cannot tell if I'm in the 3D printed part of the enclosure. Literally can't see anything. I'm going to try more down pressure. If I just go ahead and hold both of these for a moment to make the thing stop throwing an error, you can see that the lights actually shine through really well, even without the light pipes installed. And I was super happy with that. Like, all I did is I added a little, like, tunnel. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that. Uh, if you can't see it well, I'll pull up a little bit of the 3D model. But basically, I added a little, like, tunnel that goes all the way down to the LED on the board to help that light get where it needs to go. Obviously, if we drop a light pipe in there, I think it'll work a lot better. But I am really impressed with how well just lining up a hole with the board pound LED. You can see it lines up super well, cause dat 3D printing though. But uh, yeah, so you can kind of read the status of everything. And um, yeah, so anyways, I'm starting to ramble, but just wanted to walk you through the process of assembling this thing. I need to get this installed on my bench. And once I do, it's great to know that you know, if there's a short in one of our cables to ground, the cable will let us know, or this this monitor will let us know so we can, you know, replace the cable or replace the one meg resistor or whatever we need to do. And same thing for myself. If I have a short to ground, it'll let me know. And if I uh, have an appropriate impedance to ground such that I'm following ESD safety guidelines, then I have nothing to worry about. I hope that you liked this video of walking through the assembly of this little ESD monitor that we made. Really wasn't anything too crazy, but nonetheless, I always enjoy sharing this stuff with you. I know that I will sleep a little bit better at night knowing that I'm handling my electronics safely. And this is safe for the electronics, not for me, of course. I'm safe no matter what. I don't need to be grounded in order for me to be safe. 
but electrostatic discharge can destroy projects as you try to work on them, so it's always nice to know that you are building something and not damaging it in the process. If you like this video and you can't wait for more, let me know by hitting that like button, getting subscribed, or leaving a comment down below. Coming up soon, we are going to be moving on to another series, which I think is pretty fantastic. Make sure you get subscribed so you don't miss it. All right, special thanks to our Patreon members and our YouTube channel members. Thank you for supporting us directly and taking that extra step. I really appreciate it. Also want to say thank you to everyone who watches with the ads on. All Every little bit helps to keep this channel going. Seriously, thank you guys. Thank you for all your support. Well, that's about all, and I'm getting too sappy, so we'll see you in the next one. Bye.